Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching episode 123 from the Luthiers Workbench. You know, several years ago when I decided to take the plunge and bring CNC technology into my workflow, I knew I was going to have to invest quite a bit of time learning how to model my guitar designs in 3D software. Now, of course, I can use existing models that other people have created and not even bother with that. But then that would mean I'd have to build replicas of Stratocasters, Telecasters, Les Pauls. And I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to build my own designs, as I had been doing for years prior to using CNC when I was doing everything by hand. So I, I spent quite a bit of time auditioning different software and learning the basics of 3D modeling. And fortunately, I had a little bit of background doing some 3D modeling. Um, my uh, previous life, I was a graphic designer where I did a lot of packaging design. So I was mocking stuff up using 3D software uh, for presentations. So I had kind of a basic idea of what I needed to do and felt fairly comfortable dealing with uh, different uh, 3D programs. And over time, I began to learn how to use the software. And it was, it actually went fairly quickly, but I was able to start building guitars using the designs that I was creating. And my software workflow is pretty simple. I, I use Adobe Illustrator for uh, two-dimensional top-down views, full scale. And then I use uh, Rhinoceros 3D to build the full-sized, uh, accurate 3D models. And then I bring it all into um, MeshCam where I set the tool paths and write the G-code files. And then I use Universal G-code Sender to send those files to the CNC machine to route all the shapes. Now, <laughs> it's not to say everything went perfectly. There, I did learn that there are some uh, things you have to be really careful about. And as it turns out, there's so many things that you have to focus on. It really is like learning a whole new set of skills. You're, you're kind of taking your old skills, um, you know, the old hand building techniques and trading all that in for new, modern, digital, high technology skills. And if you'll remember, as I was building this uh, red Highline Echo guitar, I accidentally carved out this uh, heel scallop too deep. And <laughs> the uh, area of wood underneath the neck heel is super, super thin. So in order to beef that up, I added a little bit of carbon fiber. And um, you kind of know the rest of that story. You can go back and watch that video and see how I did that. But after that happened, I, I decided I've got to look at a better way of planning out my guitar designs when I'm in the 3D modeling phase to avoid those kind of problems. And I can, I've come up with a new approach where I take all the different pieces that I create in, in my 3D space and bring it all together to build the guitar in a virtual world so that I can check to see if everything is going to fit together and if the design is going to work. And it also helps me to determine the placement of everything. So let's go up and jump on my computer and I'm just going to give you kind of a brief overview of the technique that I'm using with uh, Rhinoceros 3D for the Mac to build a full-size, full-scale, highly accurate uh, representation of the guitar before I ever take it to the CNC machine and begin cutting it out. What I have here is a full-size, full-scale 3D model of one of my guitar necks with the fretboard and the strings. And this is a Gato hardtail style bridge. And the purpose of this model is to help me plan out as accurately as possible the build. And it will help me to figure out how deep to make the neck pocket, exactly where to position the bridge, and if necessary, where I need to position the pickup pockets. And what I've done is I've added the strings and actually these lines that I'm highlighting here represent the very bottom of each string. And where they cross the first fret, they've been positioned so that they're slightly above the fret wire and represent the kind of action that I like to have at the first fret. 
Then at the last fret, the strings just touch the top of the fret wire. So this would be the strings in the lowest position um, they should be in on the guitar. And then what I've done is I've set the saddles of the bridge to be in the lowest position and then position the whole bridge so that the, uh, the bottom of each saddle notch at the very front of each saddle is contacting the end of the string at the end of the scale length. And I've also positioned the saddles as far forward as they can go on the base plate and then moved them back about a 32nd of an inch so that I will have um, adequate intonation adjustability specifically on the high E string you know, because usually your low E string has much longer scale length so it gets um, adjusted backward. But once I have this all set up, what I can do is copy this model and then I can bring it into a model which I've already created of one of my guitar body shapes. Now usually I don't have the pickups in position here yet uh, but I did on this because um, for the sake of, of time but what I can do now is I can place the neck into the body and then lower it down until the bridge is resting flat on the top surface of the body. And this allows me to figure out, um, it, it tells me basically where I need to drill the holes for the bridge to mount it as well as the string throughs. It helps me to figure out exactly where to position uh, the pickups in relation to where the end of the neck is and where the front leading edge of the bridge is. And it also helps me to determine exactly how deep to make the uh, neck pocket. Now the really cool thing about this is, is I can build my uh, neck and bridge combination 3D models using a variety of different bridges. I can, you know, here I've got the Gato bridge. I've also got one that has a hip shot bridge. I've got a Floyd Rose tremolo bridge and a tunematic bridge. And what I can do is I can use these different models based on uh, what I need to use for a guitar build and then I can um, determine exactly where everything needs to be positioned. I can also do things like determine whether or not I need to angle the neck and how much of an angle that neck needs to be. So I keep these models in kind of a catalog of models that I have and whenever I need to design a new guitar I just pull one out and then I can set up the file and figure out exactly where everything needs to be positioned. And uh, if I need to do a different scale length, in truth, these models don't take me very long to make. You know, I can make one of these in about an hour's time. So what I've done is I have traded my old uh, skills of using a you know rulers and a straight edge and calipers and a pencil and paper and a calculator and all that to figure out where everything needs to be and all the depths to doing it using um, a 3D uh, environment on my computer and it's it's very quick it's extremely accurate and there's tremendous flexibility so even if you're not using CNC technology, you can definitely use 3D modeling to, to plan out your build and figure out exactly where everything needs to go before you fire up the router and start uh, cutting the wood. And, you know, I'm at a point with this now where I can take my files and set the tool paths and export the G code and get ready to start cutting. So in my view, this is kind of where the future is today. And I know a lot of folks are kind of lamenting the, the passing of the way things used to be with the way things are going to be done. But uh, in truth, you can't, you can't stop the march of technology. The promise is just too great. You got to figure it this way. If if there's a guy down the street who's also building guitars and he's using CNC 
to create some really elaborate uh, fretboard inlays. If you want to be competitive, you're going to have to learn to do the same thing. And what that means is, in order to, to, to take it a step beyond what everybody else is doing, you have to figure out ways to push the technology even further. And that's what this technology allows. It allows you to do things that really could never be done before in a way that's affordable. You know, those, those inlays that you would find on guitars costing ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you're going to start to find those elaborate inlays on guitars costing $1,200. So uh, that's kind of where I think the future is with this, because you can now do this stuff, you know, as long as you learn how to use the software and figure out all of its potential, uh, you're going to be able to do things that really couldn't be done before uh, easily or affordably in the past. And you know, I hate to say it, but that 10-year-old uh, down the street is going to be able to do this. So um, you know, you've got to be you've got to be prepared to take it to that next level with this with the technology where it's at. And that's how I'm currently using it to design my guitars and I'm fully aware of all kinds of possibilities that um, are going to make building guitars in the future so much more exciting. Okay, well that sort of covers the uh, process that I'm currently developing where I can use um, 3D modeling software in order to build my guitar you know, in the virtual world before I actually start building it in the shop. And hopefully this, this approach will allow me to avoid potential mistakes. And we'll just see how that goes. This is fairly new, at least to me. And I know that some of you out there are considering making the jump into CNC technology. And, and even if you don't use CNC technology, um, you can definitely use 3D programs to visualize your design before you actually make it so that you can figure out exactly how deep to make the, the different pockets and where to position the bridge and so on. And that will hopefully help you to avoid you know, cutting up an expensive piece of wood and realizing you've made a mistake. And that's never a fun thing to do. So I, as time passes, if this process for me evolves and I learn some new ideas and new tricks, I'll be sure to share them. And, you know, if, if you um, have any thoughts on the, the subject, please, you know, send me a, uh, a comment uh, below. Uh, and of course, as always, be sure to hit the like button. And if you don't subscribe, Hit subscribe. I'm, I'm cranking these videos out a couple of them a week, so I've got more quick tips coming up um, next week where I'll be uh, featuring the various tools that I find uh, are useful uh, for those of you on a budget. Um, if you've got a dollar store nearby, I think you'll appreciate these. And of course, uh, my uh, weekly From the Luthiers Workbench. Um, not sure what we'll talk about next, but uh, something always comes up. So um, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope your week ahead is uh, fruitful and um, have a great Halloween. <laughs> Halloween 2018. So, you know, that's for those of you who see this video for the first time five years from now. <laughs> anyway, take care and we will see you soon.